Okay, I'm installing the um, main bus wires for the for the modules for the M-Track. Uh, the M-Track's been uh, is a club that's been around for at least 30 years. Uh, so the early in the early days they went from analog to basic digital and went for a, a robust and as simple as possible uh, design. So the uh, they decided to use telephone company uh, sockets and plugs, which are very robust, old style. Uh, you know, it's difficult to get these now even uh, in stores, but they're very robust. So almost nothing can go wrong with them. And so at each end there'll be a socket going one to one side to the other, and that goes through the entire layout. All the modules have this. Uh, it's a four-wire bus. There's a uh, red and brown, which is the track power. Uh, then there's a green, which is 16 volts uh, power to uh, drive uh, any of your solenoids or any other activities. And there's a black wire, which is a track occupancy uh, wire, which allows for some basic uh, block uh, block movements. Uh, basically, the module can detect the uh, occupancy of the next module and then stop a train in its stop section if necessary. Very simple. Um, again we're hoping to go uh, computer uh, operated one of these days but it's a very simple design. Nowadays uh, uh, the uh, sockets and plugs have the uh, modular so you can go from basic wires to a, to a modular if you, if you like. Either way, I'll be doing that uh, just to hook up between two modules, my own modules. I'll use a modular to a, to a modular like this for the other side. Basically, I've got a uh, truckler block where I've soldered, cut and soldered the wires together and then soldered on a... Uh, a um, what do you call it? A, uh, a hookup, so I can uh, then use these wires within internal uh, operations within the uh, within the modules. Uh, that's basically the, the setup. This will go here. This will go here, and then this module is complete in terms of uh, of its basics. Okay. Okay. Two of the three modules. Hooked up the, the middle one. I've just added some light bracing. It'll uh, it'll have the stability for the two outside ones. So I'm going to first build. I'll complete this middle one and the one on the other side. Then I'll take the furthest one off and add the one on this side and complete that. So right now the foam is on. Everything's lined up. Just doing a little bit of there's a road road I was working on there. Just a little bit of scenery, just for some uh, diversion. Uh, but this section, these two sections, are now nearly complete. So I'll be adding the uh, the third section, adding the foam, painting, etc. So I was just uh, having a bit of fun with some uh, scenery work. Here's the connection to the other modules. And it needs to come in here and then there's the uh, the, the yard etc here. So I thought I'd make a, a road section going under this bridge here. The road dipping down. Under the bridge, something like that. I built a couple of side pieces for the bridge. They're going like that. Tracks will be coming through here. Another one on this side. 
just for a bit of fun get away from all the woodwork and uh, And leave the layout. There you go. Okay, I'll complete, just complete this and then this module uh, can be stored for a while. Okay. Okay, another part of the modular layout build is um, the requirement to add a block detection and stopping mechanism uh, inside the module itself and they've come up with a technique it's a little bit old school in that it uh, just uses uh, rail contact and stops the currents to a section of, uh, of track so if there's a wagons left on the track then the signal goes red and the track power is, is cut. When it's free then the signal goes green so as soon as any part of a train is in a section that's being detected then current uh, to the track previous to that is switched off. Very simple just using a relay mechanism and each of the modules are connected to each other so they can send back just a single signal to switch off track power. The uh, circuit can be switched on or off so if it's off then the lights are uh, turned off and uh, you know above ground that the uh, stop section is not working correctly is it, or, or is it switched off. So I've got my uh, locomotive here so it's going to happily go across this top section here. <coughs> Move back and forwards because it's switched off. Now if we switch the stop section on, indicated by the light, then as soon as the locomotive activates the uh, block the uh, track detection section it'll switch the uh, power off and it will stop in this case it'll stop itself because uh, I've only got this little section of, of track detected in the actual situation you would switch off the power to the module previous to stop the train there so so locomotive detected lights on red power has been uh, been turned off. Now I can get it going again by turning the section off. We'll run back across it a minute. Turn it on again. And this time we'll do it as though the locomotive I'll have a, this, is, this is representing a previous uh, train. So our locomotive is coming along and oh there's a train there so it stops free moving again oh, stops free moving in stops so that's the way the stop sections work and everybody building a module uh, has got the schematic to build this little uh, this little uh, circuit piece of circuitry for both directions of the main line so you'd have two of these one for each direction of the double track main. So this was a test. The circuit's working. Clean it up a little bit and can go under the module.